Wow, I feel like I'm coming in with a lot more speed this time. <laughs> Jackson here. Today I'm gonna to be looking at some of the best tires for riding a fixed gear. Let's get into it. Today I'm gonna to be testing three of the most popular fixed gear tires. These were sitting in my garage for over two years. That's how long I've been planning to make this video, two years. And I'm finally getting around to it. They're all in a 25C, so on the skinnier side of things, but pretty much what I'd ride on my track bike behind me. I know there's lots of other tires out there, so if you have a tire you want me to test, I'm planning on doing a follow-up video. So drop a comment, hit that subscribe button. You know what to do. First up is the Randonneur, and this one says it's the Randonneur 2. I didn't know that there was a 1, but I'm not too sure if this is different than what I've ridden in the past, and my experience with the Randonneurs is they're not that great. Um, they don't really last all that long, and they're not super cheap either. I do like that they show the little, they have like usually have like a different color uh, on the inside of the tire, so you know when it's wearing out, that's kind of cool. The Randonneur has a relatively square profile, so it seems like you're gonna have a bigger contact point on these tires relative to their general size. I'm curious to see how this one tests. Next up on the list is the coveted Gator Skin. Now the Gator Skin is one that I really have mixed feelings about. I actually have mixed feelings about all of these tires because they're kind of, none of them are cheap and I just don't know that they really give the value for the money, but they're popular. My qualm with the Gator Skin is yes, it might provide uh, good flat protection. That's sort of why I think people got into them for fixed gears is they were supposed to be a little bit thicker, but I don't think they actually are. So I'm not really hyped on these and I do remember them being pretty expensive. The Gator Skin definitely has something going on with it because it's not that thick, but there is something very rigid that they put inside of the tire that doesn't really bend the tire profile of the Gator Skin is relatively round. It's got some little bits of tread on the corners. I do like that this is a little bit more of a round profile. Next up is the Thick Slick. I'm gonna do a weight comparison, but this definitely feels like the heaviest tire of the bunch, and it feels like it's definitely the thickest. From what I remember about riding a Thick Slick in the past, and I think I've only had these once, is that they were really slippery. There's nothing on there. It's just a round piece of rubber. <laughs> I don't know how much uh, tread really makes that much of a difference on you know, a street tire, but it seems like a lot of tires at least have a little bit. So. so what I'm gonna be testing today is first the weight, which I'm just gonna double verify with my scale that these aren't vastly different than what these tires are listed as online. For me, that's not really that much of a deciding factor for a fixed gear tire, but it is interesting nonetheless. And then I'm gonna be doing a skid test. I'm basically just gonna skid for as long as I can until the tire blows out, uh, which should be interesting for me because I'm gonna be going down a hill. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> so I'm gonna get my bike set up. It's been a while since I've ridden this bike. And uh, I actually have, what do I have on here? Look how worn out this Randonneur is. That's the, the red I was talking about. I'm excited, let's get into it. First up is the Thick Slick coming in at 492 grams. Oh, jumped down to 490. Next up is the Gator Skin coming at 310 grams, quite a difference. The Randonneur coming in at 446 grams. I'm actually gonna do the Randonneur first. The skid test is gonna be really based on two things. The first is relatively subjective. It's gonna be how it feels. Is it relatively grippy? Is it really slick? I'm looking for something somewhere in the middle. And wow, these wheels are actually really beat up. Do it pro and get my tire logo above my valve. That's what the pros do. This tube's gonna blow out. And then I'm gonna be going down a hill with a flat tire and uh, no brakes. So this should be interesting. <laughs> I've had this frame since, oh boy, 2016. I am ready for an upgrade. I've got the trick track build, but I need a new just like standard fixed gear. Nice, okay. First swap, 
at the hill, I decided to gear up long sleeves, long pants, gloves, just because if I do fall, I want to have a little bit of protection. Um, this is the hill though. It's long, it's pretty steep. So hopefully I can get into a skid and stick with it. I'm probably going to do like one pedal stroke off the top and then just go into the skid smooth and steady. I hope this works. All right, is my GoPro going? This is a long hill. Hopefully no cars come. I'm kind of nervous. All right, that one pedal stroke and... Okay, this is not as bad as I would have thought. It is kind of hard to hold the skid though. And I'm losing speed, that's for sure. This tire is not uh, very slick. Okay, well, I completely, I made it from one stop sign to the other. I lost my momentum. Two chain ring bolts missing, so that's cool. <laughs> I was going way too slow. It was really hard to hold the skid. I went from stop sign to stop sign though. I'm gonna spray paint my tire just to mark where I skidded because I didn't go through it all the way, obviously. Two pedal strokes before I start skidding. That way I maintain a little bit more speed going into it and hopefully it works this time. So that's where I was skidding. Didn't even get to the red part yet. So it actually did relatively well. Hopefully that kind of sticks. <laughs> Attempt number two. Two paddle strokes. One and there's two. I'm gonna go for three. It just gets to a point where I have to lean all the way forward. Still wasn't enough speed. So far, the randonneur has lasted two of however long this distance is. Got through to the red part on the randonneur. Yeah, by the time I get to here, I gotta get to that weird spot. I skidded in the same spot. I can definitely tell I'm through the red now. I'm now seeing the little fibers on the inside of the tire. I feel like this next one's gonna be it. Those threads feel a lot different than the actual tire. It's a lot grippier. I can't believe that I didn't get through the tire on that one. Maybe there is something to the uh, Randonneur tire. You can tell it's like bulging out. I don't know how it made it through that last one. Also, it was like really sticky. It felt so weird with the threads. This is gonna be the one. One pedal stroke, two pedal strokes, and three. There it was, right here. It wasn't that bad. I was able to bail pretty good. That's what it looked like. Pretty broad area though. I think this gear ratio has two skid spots, but incredible that I landed on the same one every single time. Do the next tire. I've got the gator skin, gonna give it a go. My bets are on this one goes quicker than the random air. Let's find out. Okay, well right off the bat, thick slick seams a little slipperier than the rando, which surprises me. And there's a car coming. Oh, this is interesting. So the gator skin's a lot slicker. I was gonna make it right through that stop sign, but because I wanna keep the test the same, I'm just gonna go back up to the top. Let's give you a little perspective of how steep the hill is. Wow, I feel like I'm coming in with a lot more speed this time. This part gets so squirrely. Let's try it again, I guess. Look at all of my skid marks. <laughs> the tire is making a different noise now, for sure. Let's see what it looks like this time. Honestly, it's faring pretty well. I'm surprised. So sketchy with this car. It doesn't even look any different. Back out here again. It's literally been like two months since I've worked on this video. Got the gator skin on here still. Gonna do some more skids, see if I can blow through this thing. I got my chain ring bolts fixed. Let's give this another go. I'm a little nervous. I do not like this. I don't know if it was just that it was a lot colder or if I went slower that time. I was going so slow. I can tell that the tire's like flatter right here, but it feels like it's not doing anything. Gator skids are too tough. I feel like I'm definitely getting a different sound. I broke through on something and you can definitely see that I finally broke through the gator skin wall on this one. So, oh my God. Ah! so let's throw on the thick slick. I don't, I have no idea what number of skids I'm at. Got the fresh thick slick on there. Gonna test it out, see how it feels. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button because I'm just 
blowing through tires and tubes. The thick slick is slippery, way slipperier. Wow, that's kind of terrifying. They're thick and they're slick. The stopping power is crazy different. Like, yeah, wow, those really do not stop at all. That is so crazy. That is so crazy. That is out of control. Decent flat spot, but nothing with threads. Wow, lots of cars. Getting a little squeaky with the tire. I'm losing daylight, so I'm gonna try to get a couple more in. Oh, this part of the hill is so much steeper. All right, no stopping. That rubber is like butter. Oh, I'm so tired. Yeah, getting a little bit flatter, but so out of control. I don't know why I'm slowing down way more now. Still nothing. Ridden three miles so far. Mile and a half of skidding. A lot more squeaky. I actually see some of the threads. This is just like chilling. I don't know how that one didn't blow out. It like doubled in size, but it still didn't wear through. This has got to be the one. I don't like going into those last ones when I know it's going to blow out. <laughs> Very surprised. Time to move on to test. Number two, three and a half miles in total, thousand vertical feet just from today. For the next test, I decided to take the tires to the belt sander. Basically, I wanted to replicate the skid test, but in the more controlled environment. Unfortunately though, the test didn't go quite as planned. It ended up tearing through the sidewall instead of the top of the tire. Basically the tires were compressing and the sidewall's a lot thinner, so it broke through first. Even though it didn't go as planned, I do think the results are interesting, so stick around to the end of the video. What I decided to do instead was cut off a piece of the tire and screw it to a two by four. That way I could really push it into the belt sander without having any problems. In both tests, I tried to hold the tires in different spots on the belt sander. There's a lot of rubber coming off, gumming up the sander, and so I wanted it to try to be as even as possible. When I cut the tires, I decided to put them side by side just to get a different look on the overall thickness. The thick slick is obviously the thickest. And what it showed me, as you'll see in just a second, is that the rubber is not created equal. The randonneer and the thick slick is more than double the thickness of the gator skin, and yet it didn't last twice as long. So these rubbers are wearing down just a little bit differently. And I saw this when I was running them on the belt sander. The randonneer, for example, was kicking up a ton of rubber. So let's jump into some of the results. Before we do though, I just wanna say that yes, there is a clear winner according to the numbers, but I don't think that that really tells the full story. So stick around for my summary at the end of the video. I do think that there is a use case for each of these tires. Let's talk about tire fill. And this is obviously the most subjective. The Randonneur provided the most stopping power and the Gator skin was somewhere in the middle. If you're on a fixed gear and you're relying on skidding to be your brakes, you want something that's actually gonna stop you. And the thick slick feels way too slippery. So when I was editing the footage, I decided to take a look at, on average, how long it would take me to skid from one point to another. And the results were pretty interesting. The Randonneur, it's the slowest. The Gator skin was about 14% faster at getting down the hill than the Randonneur but the thick slick was only 2% faster than the gator skin. And I think this is interesting because if you would have asked me in the moment when I was doing the test, if the thick slick was faster and I would have said, yeah, it's way faster. And it actually wasn't. The thick slick to me did feel more out of control, more wobbly. Maybe that's because of the lack of tread. Maybe that's my own internal bias. I really have no idea, but to me, I still stand by the fact that when I was doing the test, it felt more out of control. The thick slick got really square as it wore down. There's a lot of rubber there. The Randonneur also has a relatively flat tire profile. The gator skin kept its shape, stayed pretty round. Really square tire in theory could feel a little bit weird. Maybe it adds some more rolling resistance. Maybe it makes cornering feel weird. I definitely don't like having a square tire for doing tricks. Like if you're doing a Kyo spin and your tire's not round, it feels just odd. One thing I like to do is swap my tires back to front. Once I'm almost done with a tire, maybe it's not completely worn out, I like to put it on the front and I can get a lot more life out of it. I would also trust the Gator Skin or the Randonneur in the front a little bit more than the Thick Slick just because it has a little bit of tread. 
Maybe it's a mind game. I have no idea if it actually makes a difference. For the skid test, the Randonneur lasted four and a half times down the hill. The Gator Skin lasted 14 times down the hill. And the Thick Slick lasted 10 times down the hill. To give you a little bit more context on what that means, I went back and measured the distance for one of those laps, and it's about a tenth of a mile. So the Randonneur lasted for just under half a mile. The Gator Skin lasted almost a mile and a half. And the Thick Slick lasted just about a mile of skidding. So the Gator Skin, it lasted longest in this skid test. More to come back on that for the Sander. That being said, it's a more expensive tire. And is it worth that cost? Does it provide that much more life for how expensive it is? Total ballpark estimate, but I figure an average skid is somewhere around 10 feet. That seems a little bit long to me, but somewhere around that length. The 10th of the mile is 530 feet. So that equals 53 skids for each of those laps. Bike prices are weird right now. There's a lot of weird sales happening, but on average, the Randonneur costs about $25. The Gator Skin costs about 50, and the Thick Slicks go for about 35. If we divide the total number of skids by the cost of the tire, we get a ratio, which is the skids per dollar. Stick with me, I know it's a lot of math. So the Randonneur gets about 10 skids for every dollar that you spend on that tire. The Gator Skin, gets about 15 skids for every dollar that you spend. And the Thick Slick also gets 15 skids for every dollar that you spend on that tire. So even though the Gator Skin is more expensive than the Thick Slick, they're providing about the same value for the price. And this is interesting because it debunks a long-held belief that I've had about riding fixed gears, which is it's better just to buy the cheapest tire because you're going to skid through it and it's not worth it to spend more money on an expensive tire. In this case, with the Thick Slick and the Gator Skin, it actually is worth it to buy the more expensive tire. But here's where things get a little bit weirder. So the belt sander test. The Randonneur did the worst. The Thick Slick actually outperformed the Gator Skin in both belt sander tests, which to me makes no sense at all because you'd expect to have the same results between the skid test and the belt sander test. And these tests aren't perfect. I mean, there is room for error. Maybe I was leaning more forward in the skid test. Maybe I didn't apply as much pressure in the belt sander test. The only other thing that I can think of is the thick slick was kicking up a lot of rubber. So maybe it gummed up the belt sander more and made it less effective. I really have no idea. One last note before we get into the conclusions. There's something that will make any tire that you have last a lot longer, and that's a good gear ratio. This is really important. If you're not familiar, I'll link to one of the calculators in the description. It can tell you how many skid patches you have. 4816, for example, which comes stock on a ton of bikes, is one of the worst gear ratios. It has like two different skid patches, so you're gonna run through your tires a lot more quickly, whereas if you have a 47 tooth, for example, you're gonna wear through the tire a lot more evenly, and your tires are gonna last a lot longer. It's definitely worth checking out. It's gonna make your life a lot easier in the long run, and you're gonna save on tires, and this whole video is completely pointless. So the Randonneur, it's probably my least favorite of the three, which is funny because it's the tire that I've definitely ridden the most. I do think there are a couple of attributes that could be good for some riders. The tire provides the most stopping power of all these tires. It also has the most aggressive tread. To me, it seems like this tire would work the best in slippery, wet conditions. The Randonneur is also a flatter tire, which means if you wanna have a bigger tire, but maybe your frame doesn't fit it, the Randonneur would give you a bigger contact patch, even though the overall width of the tire is the same. The Thick Slick, I think it sort of is just generally okay. I wouldn't pick it unless I were solely focused on wanting to make skids easier. If you wanna be able to do whip skids or maybe skid 180s, be able to do tricks a little bit easier, this tire might help you out. If you're maybe a beginner and you're still running brakes, but you're having a hard time initiating skids, maybe you could throw a thick slick on and it'll make it a little bit easier to do a skid. So my overall pick is the Gator Skin, which is funny because I've never really run this tire. I've always thought that they were way too expensive and not worth the money, but Turns out they kind of are. It lasted the longest in the skid test. It holds a nice shape as it wears through. It's a little bit lighter 
and it actually did provide a lot of value even though it's a more expensive tire. Thank you all for watching. I really enjoyed making this video. Let me know in the comments, will this inform your future tire buying decisions? Are there other tires that I should test? Are there other tests that I should do? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Check out fellaggang.com for some gear. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, all that good stuff. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs> so when I filmed the first skid test in the summer, I was talking about getting a new bike. I got one. I'm excited about it. Definitely going to be throwing some gator skins on there. More to come very soon. Also, some new merch. I got to drop this. If I don't drop this in a week from this video, call me out. You can head over to Foagging and add yourself to the email list and I'll email, email you when this stuff comes out. I promise I won't spam you. I don't have time to, to spam anyone with emails.